Hi, I'm Denise. I'm here to share an overview of the learning modules for October week three. This is lesson seven. I'm starting with pre-K. Um, Time for Music has been our opening song all along, but now we have a new printable. And I would suggest teacher copying this and modeling how to point to the beats as we count eight at the end of each verse and then giving it to the students to color and then the students tap their own and you can see that it's available in the supporting resources trace and color the beats then we go on to follow the flashlight warm-up you make patterns with the flashlight on the wall and the kids do ah or Brrr, whatever noises or vocalises you can think of for them Freeze dance is a way for kids to create their own movements to the beat, and then you pause it and they freeze. In the traditional way it's played, there's an elimination, but I would suggest for pre-Ks, you just let them dance and freeze. Little Miss Muffet is a finger play, and I actually really like this. It There's lots of anticipation, there's lots of dramatization in this, and it's simple to do. Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider who sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. There's so many things kids learn from the traditional nursery rhymes, but making them fun is a little bit of a challenge and this movement certainly makes it fun. We continue with the spider theme. Spiders are spooky and creepy for October, but don't say anything about witches and ghosts so everybody can do it. So spider on the floor, here's the movements. And in this demo, I'll show how I go around the circle and invite each child to say where they would like to put the spider. And I create a new rhyme to go with it. They haven't stumped me yet. Um, shoulder, I'm gonna be a little bolder. Uh, you can make up your own. And here is another printable that you can use if you wish to this week for spider on the floor, color the spider and use him in the song. Eatsy Weensy Spider, another spider song, which is lots of fun. The big spider is low, the middle spider is middle voice, the teeny tiny spider is high voice. So practicing low, middle, high with our little people. Then we do letter C says K, and we do the cool cat song. So my motion for C would be creeping like a cat. And I love cool cat, lots of fun. I need to remember to put Dana's story in here and it, oh, I forgot to do it. So I'll make myself a little note, put Dana's story in. Here's the movements for cool cat. Um, the bony skeletons walk. Again, skeletons are okay. There's no witches or ghosts or goblins. It gives them experience in a minor key. And here's some movements. My little little guys suggested zombies as a new verse to add on to the end. I thought that was pretty funny. And here's the Mortimer story, a, a kid's demo of it. This is one of my favorite books to do with pre-K, K1, even two. And there's lots of sound effects you can add to it. So that is pre-K for October week three, and it's lesson seven. I'm going on to kindergarten. Kindergarten lesson seven. Again, I'm going to use this free dance, freeze dance music, same music, and it's a fun little piece in pre K, K, one and two. All kids love it, and all kids can benefit from it. Go up the grades, do the freeze dance as an elimination. Lower grades don't. So, welcome to school, everyone. Play freeze dance. Isn't it fun? It's just a great little piece and kids can make up whatever kind of movements they want. They could twist, they could jump, um, and you don't have to do it because they're making up their own movements. Halloween Loopy Loo is always one of my favorites. It's, um, I do it with, I like to do it with a parachute. Ooh, 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 all on a Halloween night and you could substitute on an October night, if you don't want to say the word Halloween. Here's a class demonstrating it. They're older than kindergartens, which tells you, you can go up the grades with it and it's still going to be fun. Here's how to do Halloween Looby Loo if you don't have a parachute. Lisa and I demonstrate a stirring for it and then motions. Jelly in the Bowl. This is a great little poem. And there's lots of poems and chants in music play for kindergarten. You will actually find them all in units literacy. 
So look for that unit. But this one is a great little poem and I show movements for it. Jelly in the bowl, jelly in the bowl, whipple wobble, whipple wobble, jelly in the bowl. I've just demonstrated A, A, B, A phrase form. You can add instruments to it. Jelly in the bowl on sticks, on whipple wobble, whipple wobble. You could have your shakers play. Um, try it all different ways. So here is a demo of movements and instruments. Um, pumpkin fat. The kids learned it in the previous week. If you didn't get to it, it's okay because it's played here in the interactive. <laughs> And so there's some really good prepare sofa activities in here. Um, show how the notes go higher and lower. I want the kids doing this with their arms or with their whole bodies. Um, this traces the melody and I would like the kids pointing while they do that. And this is phrase three and four of the pointing. Here is an actual assessment. Can they figure out which one of these patterns is pumpkin, pumpkin? And if they guess this one, they are right. If they guess wrong, it won't go in. Um, oh, I guess it does. Okay. Round and fat turn into a jack-o'-lantern just like that. This one apparently does it correct. Then you can play it on green and yellow boom whackers. Here's one that does self-correct. Which pattern do you hear? You play it and you can check your answers by playing on this glockenspiel. If your kids have devices, you can give them the link to that in a Google slide. This is what kids will see when they go to a link from Music Play. They'll see, I want to use Kindergarten Lesson 7. I log in as a student. My code is embedded automatically. And then I can scroll down to the activity. So anytime you give a link to kids from Music Play Online, they will go um, directly, they won't go directly, but the, the bit, the code will embed in the link that you give them. Modules, they'll go to the module, but if I linked to a song video, it would go straight to that song video. If I link to a game, it'll go straight to that game. Only the modules, it goes to the whole thing. Here's a demo of the kids playing pumpkin fat. Again, this is older than kindergarten, but they're still having fun. And we end with Skinnamarine. So that's kindergarten lesson seven for October week three. Going on, this is grade one, lesson seven for October week three. We start with welcome to music and do vocal warm ups with spooky sounds. Lisa leads the kids through the spooky sounds. Play freeze dance. <laughs> And if you want to start here, having the kids be eliminated that are moving, it's more appropriate for grade one or two to do that. Today is Monday is a fun song and I, it's a literacy song. It's a great literacy uh, selection. In fact, if you go to the song in the song list, in the printables, you will see two mini books. There's a text only that the kids can illustrate. There's an illustrated. And these have been redone so that they're really, really easy. You print them off, print all the pages on your photocopier. Then you print the booklet double-sided with a left double staple and cut them off in the middle. And you've got a class set of mini books to give your first grade in about five minutes. It just is so easy. So this is the cover. In the illustrated version, kids are still encouraged to illustrate the cover, but here's illustrations. Today is Monday, today is Monday. Monday meatballs, all you hungry children, come and eat it up. And it'll go through all the days of the week with the words that we use in the song. So this is the song. Whenever you click on this link, it'll take you to the song in the song list and you can see additional activities. I don't put all of them in the modules because there's a lot and you get to choose which ones you want to do. Now, I like this activity, create an accompaniment for the song with instruments. And so you can choose from instruments that are pictured here, or you choose from whatever instruments you have in your classroom. If you don't have instruments, you clap, pat, stamp, and use body percussion. Turkey, Tuesday, Turkey. 
turkey I would stamp. In fact, I've got turkey broth on the boil. It's Thanksgiving in Canada this weekend, and I'm cooking turkey. Here is um, an interactive. So if I have hand drums and I want hand drums for Monday meatballs and Tuesday turkey, I can put them in. Wednesday, watermelon. Maybe I'll put shakers in. Thursday, thick shake. I'll keep my shakers. Friday, French fries. Let's use the jingle bells. And we'll use the jingle bells. And then actually what I would probably do is on the last one, maybe a triangle. Sunday soup, because the triangle sustains. If you don't have those instruments, substitute with what you want. But try singing the song again now with your accompaniment instruments, accompanying Monday meatballs, Tuesday turkey. I think there might be, nope, there isn't. I'll have to make a little note to make, um, to make a printable that has the days of the week in it so that you can choose the days of the week and, and it's easy to point to. I Can Pretend is a song that, um, is a non-Halloween song with the feel of a Halloween. I can pretend I'm something else, can you? And we'll do bird, horse, and frog. And during the instrumental, we're gonna pretend to be a bird and fly around the room. So I like that. It's not currently on the general song list, but I am asking for it to be put there so you can put a link directly to it if you create your own My Lists. Here's Make Up Your Own Verses and the accompaniment track instead of the vocal track. It's all accompaniment, so kids can create their own verses. No voices. Uh, dramatize the song, The Witch's Cat is Sleeping. If you can't do witches in your classroom, use The Kitchen Cat is Sleeping. And eventually we will get all these re recorded with alternate words. Um, but for now, you simply substitute if your school does not do witches at Halloween time. But this is a fun dramatization. I've always enjoyed this. It's um, the old gray cat is sleeping, but in a minor key. So it's kind of fun to do in October. Personages with long ears. We have me moving with scarves to it. And we have the listening map. And by the time lesson seven happens, we have a new listening map created by Nathan Walby, which is just amazing. It's animated. You will love the, the donkey, um, who is Sansol's music critic in the, in the um, Carnival of the Animals, showing how to go up and down. So that's grade one, lesson seven. Now looking at grade two, lesson seven. We start with Welcome to Music. I need to remember to put that one in a minor key for October. I will ask for it. We review Tony Chestnut, which I love, the kids love. And if you go to the song list again, you will have um, access, easy access to the Tempo Interactive and the Tempo Sort and printables of those as well, if you wish. Um, Birds and Bats, really nice little song for October. It's spooky in sound, but it doesn't say anything about witches, ghosts, or goblins, so everyone can do it. And it's a beautiful song for adding sound effects to. Birds and Bats Fly Through the Sky. I suggest you could maybe take a notebook and flap it. Treats in the bag go clinkety-clank. I would use a triangle or I would use a tambourine, uh, maybe jingle bells. Silly old skeleton rattles his bones. I would probably use sticks or a woodblock or clavies. So you can teach by rote using the notation. I've added that to the module uh, to update. And now you listen to and sing, add your sound effects in, and here are the suggestions. If you have ORF instruments, here is the ORF arrangement not complex. It's fairly simple. 
And again, I would, uh, if I was an ORF trained teacher, and that was the way I chose to teach the majority of the time in the classroom, this would be my whole lesson, adding the sound effects, teaching the arrangement. And I'd probably skip everything else. Pass the witch's broom stick, change it to pass the kitchen broomstick if you don't do witches. And here's a kid's demo of the kids passing it. And here's fossils from Carnival of the Animals. It's been introduced in grade one, but it's so cute. During the A section, the fossils come to life. During the B section, the security guards go looking to see what all the noise is about. And then the kids get to dramatize it. And it is fun. You can just see the enjoyment on their faces as they're enjoying it. And then our music time is over. That's grade two, lesson seven. Grade three, lesson seven. For October week three, I might have been saying October week two, but it's week three. Um, I have added from what we originally had in here, I've started them off with the freeze dance. And if you're doing freeze dance with grade three, definitely put the eliminations in. You move, you sit down. And what I might do with the kids that are sitting down is let them choose an instrument that they can play along with the music. It's a <laughs> Then you eliminate until everybody in the class has an instrument. And then you could maybe even make up rhythm patterns to play along. Or that would be an eight beat pattern. Uh, learn about the composer, Robert Schumann. These little composer videos are short. This one's a minute and 40 seconds, but they, they give a little bit of context to where this composer came from. And then we have a lovely play along. And this one uses sticks, triangles, drums. If you don't have those instruments, substitute something else or simply substitute body percussion. Claps for sticks, stomp for triangles, pat for the drums. Um, these are animated play-alongs and one of the really neat things about these animated play-alongs is when you go to the rhythm practice section, they're, in, they're sequenced according to level of difficulty. Yes, you can go to YouTube and find lots of animated play-alongs, but they're going to all be using a lot of them anyways, ta TT, where our rhythm play-alongs in a rhythm practice section will take kids well beyond ta and TT. Now this one goes a little quick. So if this is too fast. Use the gear wheel to slow it down. And that might be a more realistic tempo for third grade than the original tempo that the pianist used. Review dynamics, terms, and symbols. This may be new for your students. If it's new, teach them. This is an Artie Almeida idea. The kids repeat. Notice in music play, generally I use the word quiet for PKK1 and the start of two, and then we transition to using the more common term soft. Soft is a texture. Soft is what happens when you pet a kitty, which is why I use the word quiet for our littles who may not understand the nuances of this. But for your grade uh, twos and threes, you can start saying soft and explain that soft in music means it's quiet. Piano means to play or sing soft. Mezzo piano, play or sing medium soft. Mezzo forte, play or sing medium loud. So you say it at the dynamic level, kids echo. And then we have this wonderful poem in a dark, dark wood. And I'm, again, I need an alternative for ghost for our non-Halloween schools. But there's an interactive where you can try different dynamics in this poem. Or if I wanted to, I could just mix them up. So you decide how you want to do it. This will reset and reset. Oh, it takes them off one at a time. Reset it and then choose a different way and try the poem at a variety of dynamic levels. Love this poem. Closet key had been taken out of my modules, hadn't been put into my modules, I guess I would say, um, during COVID because kids were at home. But now you can play the game and I've put this back in the module. I love this song. It's a good do, re, mi song. The rhythm is reading. So I would have the kids, if they can, read the rhythms, 
and if they can, read the solfa. We're still working on new solfa patterns and Do Re Mi has not been recorded yet. When it does get recorded, I'll put in an intro to this song with Do Re Mi patterns in the key of F as this one is, but it's not done yet. So here's the recording of Closet Key and here's how to play the game. I choose two students and I simply go down my front row or down my class list and the first one um, gets to decide if they want to hide or find. The second one gets whatever's not done. You don't get to do both. Kids get wiggly in these kind of games and if you've got large, large classes, split them up over several periods. Don't try and do them all in one. And definitely keep track on your class list of who has had turns. Then there's no war the next week when you come in and you want to finish the game and the child says, yes, I didn't have a turn. But your class list says they did. So they don't get another turn that week. Name the solfa notes. This is a uh, uh, closet key. And this is the Okay, that's the solfa notes. I don't think that's the right video. I'll have to go back and change that. Spooky story. This is in three, four, five, and six. You can do many activities across grade levels. It makes your planning easier and the kids love this activity. And I suspect if they've done it in third grade, they're gonna look forward to doing it again in fourth grade. And they've had a whole year to think up new ideas. So this is the exemplar. And then we have handouts for the students, write their story. And these are all the sound effects that are provided. I, we should actually add new ones because it's fun. It's fun to do this. So you can then read the stories and the interactive will add it. So here is the Halloween sound effects. It's in the Halloween unit. Um, and currently it's not anywhere else. So here is... Okay, I lost it. Here it is. Here is the spooky sound effects. And so if I want thunder, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> so lots of fun sound effects in that one. Um, your grade three students will really enjoy doing this. And don't worry that it's in three, four, five, and six because it's a fun activity. So that's options for grade three, lesson seven, October week three. Here's grade four options for lesson seven, October week three. I love the bat song and I love Makue. So I hope you have enough time to teach them both. So you can teach the bat song by rote using the slide. I often use um, I can play this on recorder very easily. So I often use the recorder to play it for my students. And when you get the e, 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 initially have them do it with their voices. And then if you have no latex allergies in your school, you may, maybe want to check that first. You blow up balloons and you give a balloon to a student. And when they pull it apart, it goes e, e, e. And it just makes the most screeching, horrible sound that sounds like a bat. And on verse one and two, they go ee, ee, ee at the end. When they fly away, you let go of the balloon and the balloons fly. I did this in concert once in, um, in my school. I had all the kids either on orph instruments or with balloons. Mistake, mistake, mistake. Never ever do that. Have orph instruments, have singers, and a few kids doing balloons because the kids were so excited to have those balloons they forgot to sing. So here is the video if you choose to use this to rote teach as opposed to using just the notation. This is a fun interactive activity. What do you know about bats? So I have to name the notes to find out bats, it's an A and an E, R, A, C, T, I, V, E, at, N, I, G, H, T. Bats are active at night. Fun activity to do if you have um, a smart board, kids could come up and line up, name the notes for a word, and there's five pages of them. So there's five different fun facts that you can do. Listen to the lyrics for Ma Kue. Uh, this is a Tititoria or a Maori stick game. 
And then here's some of our students teaching it. And they do a great job of this stick gate. And I would strongly suggest you teach one pattern at a time. Um, the Polynesian Cultural Center in Hawaii has a YouTube channel. And I'm trying a new link. This link is called Video Link, and I really hope it works for you um, because SafeShare wasn't working for everybody. So if Video Link works, please let me know, and I will keep using Video Link and switch our links over. Here's the same story we did with the grade threes, the, the exemplar, and then the option to write their own story with sound effects. If you want to do both Makue and Bats and you don't have enough time for the story, do it next week. That was grade four, lesson seven for third week of October. Here is grade five and grade five, lesson seven does at the round Ghost of Tom. And again, I've added the notation to the module. If you choose to use this to teach the song by rote, use this. If you would rather use the video with the note and the solfa highlights, use the video or use both. Choice is yours. Watch the kids demo. This is really quite fun. Um, I've also was thinking about the ghost word and suggest alternate words if you don't want to sing ghost. Um, have you seen the skeleton? Skeletons? Okay, if ghosts are not. And then create your own movements if you wish, or use the movements that are suggested. This is a one chord minor song that you can do in E minor or you can do in D minor. Uh, the E minor might be easier for guitars, but the D minor is probably going to be easier on ukulele. So if you have ukuleles or guitar in your classroom, you can accompany this song with them. If you don't have enough, you could have some of the kids play for dunes on your ORF instruments. D and A, if, if you're using the D minor, E and B, if you're using the E minor board dunes. And then we go to the major minor game, which in which, this is a tricky little game. This is good for fourth and fifth. You try and melt the snowman. Level one is a little bit easier. Level two, where they hear music in major and minor, it's quite challenging. We learn a little bit about George Bizet, and then we choose instruments and play along with Le Toreador. Two instruments are suggested. There's a forte and a piano part in this play along. I would choose one instrument to play the forte and one to play the piano. The instrument pictures aren't given. And I will also mention that Music Play Online in units, in the listening unit, we have the video Bizet Stream. If you need to be out and you need a sub to take your class, showing the Bizet Stream video is a great sub plan. It's 50 minutes. It was made for HBO. It's a high quality video. We have wonderful worksheets to go with this. If you're showing this video in your own classes, I'd show 20 or 25 minutes of the video and then start the worksheets in one class next class, show the next 25 minutes and complete the worksheets. Otherwise, too much goes by. There's a lot going on in these videos and I've watched them a hundred times, so I know them well, but if you don't, split them into two classes. Um, so that's Bizet. The sevens game, there's lots of options this week for grade five. Sevens game is lots of fun. I really enjoy teaching it and my grade fives enjoy doing it. I teach it here. You can learn it from me, or you can simply go ahead and teach it to your kids if you know it. And then you can try sevens with Toreadors. And it works. to do um, a video of it with Toreadors because there's a few places where it's going to change and you might need to pat a few extra times. Uh, we still offer the option of Christian's body percussion. This is a very full lesson. If you don't have time for it, 
Leave Christian's body percussion till next week. That's grade five, lesson nine for October week three. I am going to middle school and lesson seven for October week three. Um, this one has a lot of focus on dotted eighth, 16th notes. And it's because the song, Oh My Darling, uses dotted eighth, 16th note rhythms. And I want to prepare them to actually be able to read that rhythm. Sixth grade, middle school, they, they should be starting to read rhythms like this. So we start with poison rhythm, get it in their ears. Play which rhythm do you hear? Lesson uh, level 11 of uh, which rhythm is dotted eight sixteenths. And then have them compose using dotted eight sixteenths. Level eight is where you have it and insist that they have at least one of these in there. I actually really like having the kids copy down onto a piece of paper what they have composed. Writing rhythms by hand is a different it's, it's a more challenging skill than simply doing it on the interactive. They can just click buttons if they want to on the interactive. When they have to write it down, they might stop and think about it a little bit more. And then they could try their rhythm composition. I'm gonna try this. I'm going to reset, let's see, undo, undo. And I'm going to use, I call this Tim K, T, is a, an eighth note, mm is the dot, k is part of a ticka ticka. Tim, ka tim, ka ti ti ta, ti ti ta, ti ti ta. Tim, ka tim, ka ti ti ta, ta ta ta. And I'm going to try playing that rhythm with the music that I do. <laughs> I've tried to find tracks that are fun for the kids. And then, Oh My Darling is our song that uses the dotted 816. Oh My Darling, Frank. Oh my darling, oh my darling. And I should really add the notation to that, not just the lyrics. And so you can see the dotted 816s. You can see them here, though. If you have ukuleles or guitars, you could have the students play along. Tim, ka ta, ta. Tim, ka ta, ta. That's where that rhythm comes in. And F and C on ukes are nice and easy. I don't have an alternate um, key for guitars. So hopefully you have ukuleles because F and C are the two easiest two chords to play. Oh, my darling, note highlights and solfa. Um, interactive to name the notes. And then I've, in, I've, I've included Christian's body percussion. Again, grade six is a very full or middle school is a very full lesson. Do as much as you want or you can of it. And if you decide to save body percussion till next week, that is fine. So those are the lessons for the third week of October. It's lesson seven, October week three. I'm Denise Gagne. Thanks for spending this time with me.